Welcome back to the SCP show for round three ahead of the very first uh, initial price rises for the year. I'm joined by these two guys, Cameron and Damon. How are we, boys? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, good. What about yourself, Cameron? Yeah, it's actually Mick. You're you playing uh, this weekend? You'll learn that eventually, Cruises guys. Cruises out. Do you reckon you'll get a yeah. game, Cameron? I don't Please. think I'll Exclusive get a game. Exclusive on the SCP show? Because I'm, I'm an absolute dud. Rookie rock. Um, yep. yep. Good price. Too mm. bad for me. Uh, we, we do have a, uh, a player who is getting a game at the moment up in Sydney. Oh, I know. Uh, just just here. I, I don't know if he's there. Are yeah, you there? Gary Rowan. Gary, Gary Rowan. Gary. 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 That beautiful mop of red hair. Fair <laughs> 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 Alright, get him off so, now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Damon <laughs> and Cameron. Um, and Damon, I just have to ask you, in terms of our scores this week, how does it feel being horrible? <laughs> he's, he's Sorry, I can't, I can't hear what he's saying. He's cutting out there. Can we cut transmission, please? It's, uh, <laughs> no. Well, I got twenty-two thirty-seven this week, so not too bad. A few duds that uh, didn't score that well, but uh, not too bad overall. How about you guys? Well, what did you get? You are the chocolate well, hat of the week. We'll start from the from the bottom up. I think. I it's think a, we'll work our way yeah, up. Good yeah, choice. I got the chocolate hat of the week. It uh, was it was like a, a chili chocolate, so it was uh, it was mm. quite hot. Uh, I got the score 2014. It is the year, so why not? Well, I got a proper crap score, which was 2,173. Yourself? Oh, oh, and guys, guess what? The uh, previous chocolate hat has come back in a big way and has gotten 2,307. Talk Ooh, about a turnaround. So, uh, well played. Hopefully that happens to me. That yeah. will happen to me. Yeah, it'll it could eventually. happen if your team wasn't so bad. But hey, talking about hot to trot, that pretty much brings up our yeah. very first segment of the show and we've got plenty to get through. So we're going to jump straight into it. Now ahead of the first price rises this week, we've got to be having a look at plays that we missed out on. And we've probably got to jump on before they, uh, they they go into oblivion with their price rises going up. We're going to start off with David Swallow of the Gold Coast Suns. $429,400, his cheapest chips as a defender midfielder. Uh, he's averaging 131 super coach points, the break even of minus 23, and, and faces Brisbane, Hawthorne and Melbourne in the next three weeks. And he is going gangbusters. He's owned by 64,000 people, but... The big thing we've got to take into consideration as well, he is averaging 29 disposals a game at the moment and he's playing in the midfield with averaging 5.5 uh, clearances. So he's basically another midfielder. Get him in. Force him in somehow. I'm doing it this week. I have to. Yep. I got him in last week. I preempted it. And yep. Lucky I did. Because I got rid of Webster. Trades again, Damon. It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> You've got you to make the most of before price rises, Joyce. You don't worry. It's, it's, Maybe. It's, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I had faith in him from the beginning. I actually, uh, he was. I actually got him into my team probably about thirty seconds before the uh, thirty <laughs> seconds before the lockout. All right. Anyway, heading on to uh, the next player that I think a lot of people will be trying to get into their sides. Uh, big name, Joel Selwood. Uh, his price is six thirty-eight thousand seven hundred. He averages one forty-eight so far. Lovely. With a nice little break even of fifty-eight in his next three games: Collingwood, West Coast, and Hawthorne. And uh, I think there was a lot of people that worried about his injuries going into yep. the other season, limited pre-season, but uh, hasn't shown any any uh, signs of that. Who you got for us, Joyce? Uh, Dane Zorko, who I did have in my side, and I did a reverse Cameron uh, and uh, got rid of him. For reverse Cameron, that's I great. I think it was <laughs> Gunston that I brought in. So he had an all right first week, but the second week wasn't good. So I didn't listen to my own advice. You didn't listen. I didn't listen. I never pick <laughs> tall players in my forward and back line, but I did it. Uh, he's averaging 141, break even of negative 33. Ouch. Um, massive score on the weekend, 161. I think that was only second to Pendlebury. Um, and his next three are against Gold Coast, Port Adelaide and Richmond. So I think he's got some scope to, to score well again. Well, thanks for that, Gary. Um, <laughs> next one is Nick Rewald. And uh, he is, he's a bit of a surprise package, I guess, uh, I guess you could say, seeing he's 115 years old. Um, <laughs> He's got 567,100. His average is 142.5 so far. Break even of 30. So, you know, very, uh, very good potential there. Next three, West Coast, Adelaide and Essendon. Um, can he keep it up? That is the question. I don't know. He did this last year, I do recall. And Joyce actually jumped on him last year and he was he was like, yeah, this is, this is the one. This is my, my hidden gem. And um, he didn't go for him this year. So I missed out on him. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's one to get on. 
episode. But uh, moving into the rookie ramp, we're having a look at the rookies that we should be considering as well ahead of the price rise. And if you haven't got any of the following uh, lads, it's time to jump on, get rid of the guys that aren't playing and look for these ones. And I think, Matt, you're going to kick us off. Yeah, I think with the price rise, it's really important to get the rookies, even more important than getting your super premiums like Selwood. So these are the guys really to look at. Start off with Polek. He looks so settled in the Port Adelaide lineup. Um, a different player than what he was at Brisbane. He's averaging 100, priced at 172, 600, breaking of negative 110. And his next three are against North Melbourne, Brisbane and West Coast. So they should be some good challenges for Port Adelaide and it'll good, be good to see how he stands up. And... Uh yeah. Sorry, did you have a no, comment about that? No, I didn't. No, 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 I was no, just going to ram into the next one. Dom Tyson is the next one. 216,800. <laughs> average of 108. Break even of minus 95. GWS, Carlton and Gold Coast, probably the three worst teams in the AFL. You could probably say it's yeah, in the three. Yeah, I reckon it's probably about right. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yep. Especially that second <laughs> one. Um, and if he gets... Look, it, I, I traded Martin, Jack Martin, for him. And it was a good <clears> decision. And that's probably helped me. So uh, it'll help you too. Yeah, I've tried it at uh, old Viv, Viv Michi for him. Um, I think yeah, he's going to skyrocket, and he's, he's the one to get on apart from Pollock. So, you know, I had him from the start. What other one? Well done. Anyway. Next player uh, to look at is Xavier Ellis. I think a lot of people will be on him. The fact that he's mature age, he's gone up to West Coast. Uh, he was renowned in the past for being the, uh, the vest man you call him, uh, but he's kind of broken out of those uh, those shackles, I think. Hopefully he continues. Mm. Got 98 against uh, Melbourne, uh, good bench op- option, and he's priced at 159, 100, average of 82, break even of negative 79, and his next three, he's got the Saints, Geelong, and Port Adelaide. Well, another player to look at as well is Luke Dunstan. He's owned by over 100,000 people, so he's pretty popular, but if you haven't got him, get on him. He, um, he will not lose his spot on the side, but to take you through his stats currently, he's at $132,300, oh, average of 82, a break-even of minus 90, and faces West Coast, Adelaide, and Essendon. So a bit more tougher uh, opposition for the Saints coming up over the next three weeks. But, um, look, he's going to he's gonna fly. There's, there's, he's in their best 22. But other, other people to have a look at, I mean, um, Patrick Ambrose has been really well traded in this week. He's got a solid break-even. Um, Tom Langdon, if you haven't got him, is one to consider. Um, and obviously Luke McDonald as well. He's still um, only owned by about forty or 50,000 people. So It's ridiculous. After his 90-odd score on the weekend, you cannot overlook him. But um, moving, actually, what have you got more. to say, Gary? Uh, one more thing, <laughs> just putting on my Richmond hat again. Um, Matt Thomas is oh, someone that... It's all about Richmond, yeah, isn't it, Joyce? No, no, no. All he's about Richmond. 119.5. And he's priced at two hundred and fifty. dollars Okay, 000. quick question for you then. Yeah. With Daniel Jackson coming back that into the side. I was about to say, <laughs> Well, look at that. I've given the segue. Is it worth it? Should we trade him in if we've got Jackson coming back in the Richmond side? I think Richmond are being showed up for pace. And with Jackson coming in, they're going to want to get more of that. And that's what Matt Thomas isn't. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him not dropped, but, you know, rested for a few games this year. So I would probably be more inclined to go with someone like Dom Tyson. If, if that's the case, happy, if that's the case, does that mean if Jackson and Thomas stay in the same side, that'll obviously have to see Thomas's points drop on often. Would that be right? Yeah, probably, because Thomas is doing the tagging roles, and that's what Jackson's really mm. there for. He played the tagging role in the VFL practice match last week. So um, I think his role might be taken, and... You know, he is a big tackler, um, but he's got, you know, around 10 tackles a game for the past two games, which is really good. Um, and his kicking's better than what I remember it at Port Adelaide. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, if you feel like taking a gamble, go for Matt just Thomas. But he's got that bad uh, round eight buy as well, so that kind of counts against him. Just quickly on Matt Thomas, look at his history. I mean, he's eight, nine years at Port. I don't think he averaged for the entire season over 60. So mm. watch out for him. He's a he's a bit of a danger man there, I think. Oh, turning people around. No, I know right. Great speaking of that. speaking of Richmond, then moving into trade bait. I reckon a player you've got there, uh, Gary, is probably someone that's probably on my trade radar this week. Who have you got? Yeah, I do have him, Trent Cochin. You talked um, me into it, you well, bastard. He, he, he had a great first week. I mean, he got I think it was 118 in his first week, which is pretty good. Um, and then I think he copped an injury towards the end of the first game that wasn't widely reported. So oh, um, I was considering trading him out. Um, 
it'll be interesting to see if he's even named against the dogs because he normally does very very well against the dogs um and with martin escaping suspension i think maybe they might rest him but if they don't i think he'll score very well well what are his stats at the moment joycey uh, he's averaging 102 still, so not too bad. Um, and he's priced in the you know mid upper 500,000s, 572, uh, break even of 116, and against the dogs, Collingwood and Brisbane. So Collingwood aren't doing that great. So it's no, don't you worry about us, pal. Not that great. I mean, you're <laughs> normally better. So three relatively easy. Teams Gary, look, you up. lost on the weekend to us. All right, just settle down. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, I'll just <laughs> Moving on, we've got Dane Swan. Um, God, if you've got him, I feel sorry for you because he is carrying an injury. I will tell you that right now. Um, $632,600, an average of 77, which is anything but Dane Swan like. Break even of 198. So, honestly, the best thing to come out of this is give it a month to five weeks and he will be rock bottom in price and he'll be a great one. You can probably trade up your, you know, your Dom Tysons, your Jared Polex, those sorts of players into a Dane Swan because he will be ridiculously cheap in about five weeks. So have a look at him. But the Pies play Geelong, Richmond and North in the next three weeks and it doesn't come much harder than those three uh, together. So can, if you've got him, you've got to get him out. Take his price while he's got it because he's going to drop at least 100 grand this week. Mm. Yeah. Can't afford to, to lose that sort of no. money, I think. And that's Not all, all part of Swanee's plan. Mm. Um, and <laughs> another one, Todd Goldstein, uh, 612,400, underperforming, average of 82. Next three, Port, Sydney and Collingwood. Uh, probably probably I, I wouldn't personally drop him if I had him because... Uh, 82 is not bad for a Ruckman. But if they keep playing Dan Curry, do you reckon that's going to impact him? Because he's used to playing as the sole Ruckman. That's the only concern for me. That's if they keep playing Dan Curry. Mm. Well, with Mumford with 142 average or something like that, and a couple of 100 and something thousand dollars cheaper, you could probably... But I don't know. you could, you very well could. It's the yeah. time to do it. Who have you got? Yeah, next player. He's got the biggest break even of all the players that we've spoken about so far. Drew Petrie is uh, priced at five fifty four thousand three hundred with an average of forty nine. Break even two hundred and eleven. That's ridiculous. There's Another no one will be cheap. That. Fantastic. <laughs> Looking for a couple of upgrades soon, yeah. I reckon. That's good. But um, look, while we're on it as well, for anyone that's whinging about having Patrick Dangerfield uh, underperforming, just keep in mind the Crows face. Now, from memory, mm. they have Melbourne, GWS, St Kilda and the Bulldogs for the next four weeks in a row. If you're thinking about trading him out because they've got Sydney this week, fret not. Keep him in your side because he's going to go berserk for the month after that, I think. So... Panic stations aside, keep him in your keep him in your side. I reckon. Yeah, it's it's still plan. Three, so yeah exactly. It's not that yeah. bad. Nothing to be sneezed yeah. at. Better than a kick in the guts. It's better than plan. being a Carlton supporter, I guess. But Sydney will play Gary <laughs> on Dangerfield, and yeah, then no, it's possible. Yeah, Gary, Gary will get another five, yeah. and yeah. Gary go and break a leg again, please. Yeah. That's, that's a bit harsh. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Just give us a read. Anyway, that is a bit harsh. Moving <laughs> on. Now, it is the big Q this week. The big Q, uh, as we saw last week with Daisy. Um, now, I said I was and I, I was going to keep him. Thank God, because he returned with 92. But I don't think it's enough to keep him in my side because I'm going to have to trade him out for Swallow. I need Swallow on mm. my side. But with that aside, the big cue this week, we are discussing Nat Fife. And he's been suspended for two weeks. Now, we've had a big discussion over our Twitter and Facebook pages today about whether we should hashtag keep Fife or hashtag trade Fife. And, guys, what do we think? If... Honestly, give me a quick quick answer. Is it yes or no? Trade or keep him? Uh, well, I think when he comes back, he's going to make his break even. So there's no worry about him losing his price when he comes back. But again, for a player of his quality to be out for two weeks, you're going to have to rely on someone like Dunstan. Uh, Pollock probably would or could match his scores. Yep. but That's if you're not playing you, Pollock on yeah, the ground. Yeah, you're relying on your rookies to, to really Get belt out those scores yep. that, that he would belt out. So I would... 50-50, I think, yeah. But look, Fife is uh, he's very unreliable anyway in terms of kicking efficiency. In that first week, he you know he was up there about 100%. Um, but you you can't you sort of you can't bank on that with Fife, I don't think. So that maybe is what he's one down for his disposal efficiency. Look, if anything, train him for Monday. Monday it could be an option. Which, I mean, because Barlow's out for four to six weeks, so you, a lot of attention will be going yeah. to Monday. 
this mm. week and next two well, weeks. Well, if we had a look at it, if we take into consideration that we have head-to-head -head games this week, so everyone's going to want to get over the line in their first win of the, of the round. Secondly, people are, a, lot, a lot of people as well take into account their overall score, which five on the bench for two weeks will impact. But, I mean, let's have a look at a couple of um, options just quickly. We've got Scott Pendlebury, who, if you can trade up to him at 683000 is a pretty good option. Mm. Average of 155, that's, that's ridiculous. Joel Salwood as well, 638,700. He's priced at with an average of 149 as well. No injury pre-season. I don't know why I let Joyce talk me out of getting him. I didn't say um, Listen here, minute. Ranger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Steve Johnson at 625, um, average of 131. He's going absolutely bonkers as well. And Joe Watson at 135, uh, average at 601,000. I'm going to ask all of you really quickly. Joyce, we can start with you. Out yep. of the four I just mentioned, who would you pick? Uh, Selwood. Damon? Oh, if you had the money for it, Pendles. Uh, point of difference, uh, Stevie J. Yourself, Cameron? I've already got Pendles, uh, so I wouldn't pick him. Probably Job, actually. I'm a big mm. fan of Job now. Well, if, if I could, I'd get Selwood in a heartbeat because I love him anyway. But <laughs> I think that pretty much sums it up. If you've got five... It's such a tough one. You're probably really going to have to weigh up what your bench is, as you said. Mm -hmm. If you've got coverage on your bench that's good enough, utilise it. But if you don't, I would consider trading him to a premium that's going to go, that's got a good draw coming up. Mm -hmm. And just quickly on Selwood, even with these new umpiring standards and how they're letting a lot of things go, he's still getting the head high freeze. Oh, yeah. so that's still a good thing for Super He's getting away with a lot, that Selwood boy. Yeah. But another reward. I don't know if you call it a reward, but it is another Chris segment. Um, a the unique of the week this week. Now I thought it was a fluke last week. I'll be honest, I thought that was an out and out fluke. But I do not believe that Gench is going to drop off because Matthew Gench is our unique of the week, obviously. But two hundred ninety-eight thousand one hundred dollars, average of one hundred and nine, with a break even of minus fifty-two, plays the Saints. Um, Sydney and GWS in the next three weeks. Wow. Um, he's wow. He's only averaged 63 Supercoach points across his entire career to date. And obviously we've got a Andy Otten that's out. Um, we've got Ricky Henderson up there that's out as well. What would you say? Have you, have you guys thought about bringing him in? Yeah, at the price I have considered it. Yep. Uh, I think you've got to. Um, anyone under 300 grand I think is someone that is, is going to rise, especially averaging 109. But personally, it's a case of, uh, like, Matthew is it, Wright. Is this like, like Geary a couple of years ago? Or like Geary, yeah. I was going to say, with, with Wright, his scores have been awesome during the yep. preseason. First week, he was great. But then, as soon as Douglas came in, yep. changed his role, yep. and his scores went back down again. So yep. I, I'm a bit weary. I wouldn't Look, touch him. I've got a general rule that if I can't pronounce their name, I'm not going to get him in my team. <laughs> so so you haven't got Cole Jashen in here, Will? No. <laughs> I have Col Nash Nash. Um, so Col I'm not. Col Nash -Nash. So I will not get Yanch either. Um, with Yanch, I think I think it's worth getting him because the reason that he wasn't he's been named the sub in past seasons and has affected his score is because his defensive pressure wasn't there. Um, he's always been an amazing kick, which is great for Super Coach, but um, his defensive pressure was lacking, and now it, just watching him play, he looks a lot more manic, um, which is really good. So I think he'll keep this spot and. He's obviously playing very well. He's one of the few Adelaide players that is playing well. Um, so I don't see a reason for Brendan Sanderson to move him around. So I think he, he could stay there. I can't afford to do that trade, though, because there's two other things that need to happen mm. in my team. But, I mean, if you've got someone like Webster and you can afford yeah. to yeah. trade him up, you know, he what the difference between Webster and um, Jench is what... Sixty thousand dollars, something like that. So, I mean, if that's the case, if you've got a lazy sixty thousand on your bench, the first thing I'd be doing would be cha upgrading Webster straight into um, Henderson if you can afford to do that. If that's an, if that's an option for you and you don't need to do any other trades, but to Henderson or to Ah, oh, sorry, to Hench. <laughs> My God, what have you been I don't know. Yeah, I, you, you're right. Though. I'm like, mesmerised by his ranger hair. Riding anyway. the uh, <laughs> riding the wave, the cash wave is the best way to do it. Moving on to the tweet of the week, and uh, we've got some really good tweets this week. I, I will say, mm -hmm. very good tweets. It's very hard Not to pick hitting. this week. And um, look, who's going to kick us off? Which but, one of you uh, monkeys are kicking us off? I will kick okay. us off. Okay, you, I'm Cameron, the only big monkey. Ears. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, Who is our first tweet? Read um, it out for Ke us. Keaton. Keaton Marin. 
at Keats21 if you want to follow him or her, um, whoever that is. Yeah. I, think it's him, I think we'll say it's a guy. Um, at Supercoach Page. What should take priority? Underperforming mid-pricer to primo or underperforming rookie to a rookie with 80-plus average. I do not understand a word of that. When well, I, I get out. it. I reckon if you trade a underperforming or a rookie to, say, let's use Honeychurch for an example. If you've got Honeychurch and you can trade him up to Polak, oh, Polak, for example, oh. who's averaging over over 80, yeah. you'd want to do or, that. Or do what I did, which or, is an issue to uh, Tyson. I think, I think what the gist yeah. is here is, is it better to take that underperforming mid-pricer to a premium Who's going to be consistent? Selwood or yeah. uh, Honey Church to Pollock. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Would you rather go up to an out and out premium that's going to give you that hundred points a week, or would you rather get on the money wave and jump on a on a rookie that's going to go gangbusters? Oh, on, it has to depend on how the rest of your yeah. team is, yeah. um, obviously. But you know, if you haven't got players like Pollock in there, and you've got say Honey Church instead of him, of course. Pol- of course you, I think I think for me anyway, going from rookie to rookie is going to benefit you in the long run because eventually those rookies are what's going to enable you to trade up yeah. to premiums. But moving on, um, I've got Michael Cummins at MJC0810. I think I got that right. Anyway, right, I that. Um, is Ambrose a must-have rookie up forward and would you trade him for Gary Rowan? Sorry, <laughs> mate. <laughs> 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 would, would you trade him for Rowan? Higgins, Caddy, or Josh, uh, Jay Kennedy Harris. Um, hashtag I love trading. This guy loves trading as much as I, I love trading. I love Not trading. As much as Damon, no, no, yeah, Damon is a bit of a <laughs> trader. Anyway, um, I honestly think if you're getting Ambrose, he's in essence best 22 because there's a couple of, I'm not going to name them, but a couple of um, lazy small forwards at that club. Um, I like him a lot. He's shown the weekend that he can score really well, but at one stage he was up at 94 super coach points and with a couple of actions he dropped the right back down. So don't know if that says anything about his disposal efficiency, but um, he's got a good price rise. Um, Rowan is injured. Um, Higgins is Higgins. Caddy is better for Dream Team. Um, and Jake Kennedy Harris is always going to be the sub. So really, it's um, you probably want to trade him for Caddy at least, then you get the money and you can upgrade elsewhere. But... Um, I'd probably be more inclined to offload Rowan. Yep. Anyway, who have you got? I'll do the same. I've got one here from Craig Fairbairn. Is it Fair? How do you pronounce that? Fairbairn? Ben? Yep, that'll do. Anyway, what's the tweet? Thanks, Craig. We'll call you Craig anyway. That's (laughs) that's easier. Uh, Thoughts on Matthew Wright. Uh, Can afford to get Zorko or do I keep Wrighty? Now, I think, uh, as I explained before, Matthew Wright, with Douglas coming back into the side, his role has now changed. It's been much replaced Wright. Um, and his, his scores have been affected. And I think um, last week was a very good indicator of what's to follow for the, the rest of the season. And I think it's too much of a risk to keep him on and, and hope that his score is going to turn around because I'm a big uh, big fan of looking at past history uh, as a way of looking forward to, to how they're going to perform. And hmm. Zorko, he's performed against two quality sides. Hawthorne and Geelong. Geelong, that's it. Yep. So that's enough for me to say go for Zorko. Yep, that's it. And uh, Gary... Are you there? Are you yeah. with us still? Look at that you. beautiful mop of red hair. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, no, mine's from Tom Doyle at Tom underscore Doyle one, uh, and he asks who to bring in for Jack Zebel. Um, I was actually considering Zebel at the start of the year. Good thing I didn't get on him. He's averaging about sixty odd. Um, I think the one main one to get in is Mark Murphy, who was an absolute dud in the preseason, and that's what put me off him. I actually yep. had Murphy in my team as well. Um, so we I didn't listen. Uh, yeah, I didn't listen to myself. Um, but, yeah, Murphy's number one. If you can afford Watson, go to Watson. Um, I mean, Paige said she was bringing in uh, Swallow for Thomas. Which means don't bring in Swallow this week because yeah, I've yeah, put, yeah, put the moz on him. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think Murphy's a really good option. Um, probably the best one around that sort of price point, And he's going to go up a lot in price, so... Uh, you're not going to get him this cheap again. Mm, and he loves playing. He's got a what's he got? He's got an average of 110 against the Bombers. So good, good mm. week to bring him in for a nice price rise as well. But mm. uh, look, for now we've got a very special guest on the show, and I think we're coming live from Baghdad. I mm. think. I think from the battlefield. I think the, the battlefield. battlefield. Yeah. Sarge, we got you. Paige, yes. Fantastic. Where are you? Um, I've been the blood. In the desert right now. Oh, 
Right, okay. Well, here's a couple of super coach questions for you. Hit me. Number one, should we keep Nat Fife? Yes. Yes, it should. Uh, he's only gone for two weeks. So if you did have Ben's coverage, go ahead. Sub him in. Should we trade Trent Cochin? No. No, you should not. Um, he's, a premium, he's a premium midfielder. You need him in your side. He'll come good soon. Will Dane Zorko continue his form throughout the year, Sarge? I think so. Good job, security. Uh, he's pivotal to the Brisbane Lions uh, forward line anyway, so he should come good. And he'll, he'll keep continuing his performances, I guess. So, yeah. Would you downgrade Will Minson or Todd Goldstein to get Shane Mumford? Yes, uh, I would. It's uh, 600000 for any of those Ruckman is a lot. So a good 100000 in your kitty and a price increase after this round would be good. Now, Sarge, should we trade in Matt Thomas? Yes, I have. I have this week. So uh, I think it's around 200 k That's going to be a big increase, especially with his break-even. So yes, yes, you should. Can David Swallow be trusted if we jump on him this week? Yes, my rule is um, back-to-backs are always a good thing. So back-to-back hundreds against Geelong and Pradlet, I think. So they're not bad sides, so get him in. Who would you choose? Scott Pendlebury or Gary Ablett as captain this week? Oh, Gaz is playing Brisbane, I think. So if Reigns is in, go with Pendles. But if Reigns isn't in um, the Brisbane Lions side, get in Gaz. Now, should we listen to this Matt Joyce bloke and, <laughs> uh, and, and keep or trade Sean Higgins? Uh, we should listen to him by saying, um, keep him. He'll be all right. He's getting a lot of disposals. He's not using it well, but he's getting it. So that'll come along. I watched him um, at Eddie and he, he did all right against the Roos. Now, can we trust Matthew Gench? Yes, you can. Like, my, like I said, back to back. He's done all right for Adelaide as well. He's important to their side. And lastly... Sarge, yes, how please. do you spell Cade Kolejashny? You have your one attempt, otherwise it is 20 push-ups. All right, well, it's K-O-L-O-D. Correct me if I'm wrong, D? You're doing well. J. J? J. N? Boom, boom. Wow. Sarge, drop and give me 20. I cannot do that. Well, you enjoy Not your the time desert. there in the Not desert. In the no, you enjoy those Can camels. Some water, please? No, I'll 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 sort out a uh, someone to bring you some some beautiful naturally spring water. Cheers. Thank you, Sarge, for joining us. We'll see you no next worries. week. See you later. Well, that was quite a uh, wow! Well, live from the Middle East. Thanks, yeah. Sarge. Um, yeah. He'll be back next week um, in a new, unique and exotic location, we'll say. But for then, uh, make sure you get onto our Facebook and Twitter pages and tell us which questions you'd like Sarge to answer next week and we will put them to him. Mm. And uh, until then, we uh, Gary, we hope your hair isn't red next week. You um, no, you, you enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> you um, you enjoy. I really hope the uh, the drapes match the curtains. But um, look, oh, until then, we will see you all next week. We are over and out here at SCP. Hope your team wins on the weekend. Catch you then. Okay, bye.